Today on Callahan's Garage, we're gonna take that beetle and put it on that rotisserie. And I'm gonna show you probably not the best or definitely not the easiest, but a way to get the body off of your beetle so you can do some more work to it. So stick around. All right, folks, welcome back to Callahan's Garage. My name's Callahan, and today we are back looking at David's 1965 Beetle. So we've already done a good bit of work to this car. We put front and apron and spare tire well in it. We did re new rear apron and rear quarter sections. So if you haven't seen those videos yet, please go check them out and leave some love on those. But today we're gonna to talk about getting the body off of this thing. So we've got brand new floor pans that we're still gonna put on here. And we also need to get the body off so we can look at the heater channels and kind of assess you know, how, how serious the rust situation on this thing really is. We don't really know. Looks pretty clean from what we can see, but we wanna get the body off of the, off of the floor pan so we can see the underside of those heater channels really well and really get in, in here and make sure we get rid of all the rust in the car. So let's go take a look at the rotisserie. All right, folks, so this is my rotisserie. This is what we're gonna to use to get the body up and so we can do some work on it. You absolutely do not need a rotisserie to do this kind of stuff. You know, you can absolutely do the same, same work that we're gonna do on a decent, sturdy pair of saw horses, and that's totally fine. But having a rotisserie makes it really nice, you know, when we're getting really deep into some of the rust repair on these cars. Um, so I built this rotisserie a couple years ago for a lengthy project I did. Um, Pretty basic setup, you know, I built this based on a few different designs that I've seen on the Samba and, you know, other other avenues. So, you know, very basic setup. It just grabs our front body mounts on the beam, grabs a couple of points on the bottom side of the heater channels, and then grabs our rear body mounts. And then we've got, you know, this thing will rotate a full 90 degrees in either direction. So, you know, makes it very nice to get the car up, you know, at a height where you can stand, you can work on it, you can get underneath of it comfortably and get access to everything that we need to do in the car. Now, only downside of this thing, it is very high. Um, so getting the car up on here without using, you know, a hoist or a lift or anything can be pretty challenging, but I've done it before. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do it with nothing more than an engine hoist and a little ingenuity. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're ready to start looking at taking the body off of this thing. And, and this car has been disassembled a pretty good ways already. Um, but, you know, there's really not a lot of disassembly that has to happen to get the body of the beetle off of the pan. Um, so like if, if all, you're, all you need to do is floor pans in your car, you don't have to go take in the fenders and the bumpers and everything off of the car. Like you can leave the car almost entirely intact and get it off. Um, there's only a few things that have to come out of the car to be able to take the body off. Like the gas tank has to come out to get to the front frame head bolts. Um, the rear seat bottom has to come out to get to a couple bolts under there. Um, a couple of wires, a speedometer cable, there's really not a lot. And so, you know, with a couple of buddies and a few hours worth of work, like you can have the body picked up off of your car, you know, very easily. So like in a weekend, you know, a weekend's manner of time, you know, with a few friends, you can very easily take the body off, do your floor pans and get the body back on and drive to work Monday. You know, it's very doable. Um, so. First thing we need to do, we're gonna get this thing jacked up so we can get up under it easily and then we'll start looking at all the bolts and start taking this thing apart. Okay, so we're basically gonna start up here at the front of the car and we're gonna work our way back. So like, like I said, our gas tank needs to come out. This car, we already have the gas tank out of the way. If your gas tank isn't out, you know, in the early cars, we've just got four bolts and a gas line underneath. The whole thing comes out. The later cars, you know, well, you'll have your filler neck and some vent lines to undo, but pretty straightforward, you know, just take the bolts out around, unhook a couple of hoses, pull the gas tank out of the way, easy peasy. So then after that, if we look up under our gas tank area, we have two big bolts that go into the top of our front end. So both of those bolts need to come out. We have our wiring for our brake light switch. 
we have our steering coupler. So we only need to hook, unhook half of the steering coupler. So we're just gonna unhook the steering column from the steering coupler. And then we've got our speedometer cable that runs down to the front wheel. So we're gonna get all this unhooked and then we'll move, keep working our way back. So we've got our two big frame head bolts out already. Those are 17 millimeter bolts. I just busted them loose with the impact. Those you usually don't seize up in these cars. Um, those typically come out pretty painlessly. So zap those out. We can unhook our brake light wiring down here. I've taken the clip off of our speedometer cable so we can just reach down, pull that out of our hub. Now it's loose, it'll come up with the body. Last thing we need to do is we need to get two bolts out of our steering column. So we've got four bolts total in the steering coupler here. So we just need to get the column loose from the coupler and then that's gonna free up everything up here. And if this has never been apart before, there will be some tiny cotter pins in here. Um, you know, they can be really tricky to get out. So typically a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just, you know, put some muscle behind it and break those cotter pins loose as you're breaking the nut loose. And it usually alleviates a lot of stress of trying to get those pins out. Okay, so we've got everything up here unhooked, our steering coupler, our frame head bolts, our little bit of wiring and cables. Um, and you can see, as I was taking all this apart, I just threw all my hardware into the spare tire well here. I've taken enough of these cars apart. I know exactly where every single bolt and everything goes. Um, if you need to, you know, bag all this stuff up, label it so you don't misplace any hardware and you know exactly where everything goes back when you put it back together. So let's move underneath the car now. We've got one more thing we need to disconnect up under here that I forgot about. We have our brake fluid reservoir that runs down to our master cylinder. So we just need to unhook this line. So we'll put a little clamp on this line so we don't so spill brake fluid everywhere. Unhook this little hose and this, this will be good to go. Okay, so we are up under the front of the car now. And this is going to be our first source of headache on this car. So on these cars, we have four bolts that go into the bottom of the front firewall. So we have two on each side. We got two 15 millimeter bolts and there will be all sorts of rust and crud, you know, up in the hole that these bolts go into. A lot of times when you pull these bolts out, they'll be like almost halfway rusted through. These are a lot of times these are really difficult to get out. So you don't want to just go reefing on these with your impact. You know, they'll just break off. And if you break these off up in that firewall, it's a real hassle to, to repair. You know, we've got to cut into the firewall, remove those old nut certs, weld it all back up together. It's just a lot of extra work that we can try to avoid if we're just careful getting these out. Um, you can't really get any penetrating oil up into these. So your best bet is just to try to crack them loose and then just kind of work them back and forth until they free up a little bit and then hopefully they'll come out. Um, so we'll see how this goes. This feels like it's coming out pretty easily. So I'm just going to put a little, just going to work it back and forth a little bit. Feels pretty good. I think this one's going to come out pretty painlessly. Getting a little tight. I'm gonna run it back in a little bit. It's pretty tight, but we're still spinning consistently. I don't see that bolt twisting or anything. Ooh, there we go. Getting snug. that sound that's no good that means we're you know really getting some tension on those threads so i'm just going to keep working this thing back and forth and hopefully we'll get it out okay so this thing finally let go and if we look at that this bolt we've got some pretty good crud built up we've actually got some threads that are completely rusted away here so we'll get some new bolts when we put this back together. So we got three more of these to get out. It's gonna take a few minutes. We'll get on those. The main thing, just be patient when you're doing this. You do not wanna break these bolts off. So just take your time. If you need to step away from it for a second, step away, take a break, 
move on to some of the other ones because you absolutely don't want to break any of these bolts on the bottom side of the car. Okay, so we were able to get all four of those out, you know, pretty painlessly, but you can see what I'm talking about. Like these bolts just completely rust away to nothing. I mean, like the shank of our bolt is all, is completely eaten away. The tip of the bolt is completely eaten away to well into the threads. So these really can be difficult to get out. And unfortunately, we've just got more of this ahead of us. You know, all the bolts down the side of the pan are going to be the same story. They're going to be rusty just like this, and they're going to be really difficult to get out. Um, but I'll show you, like I said, I'll show you a couple of tricks and hopefully we'll get them out. So our next step is going to be all of the floor pan bolts that run down the perimeter of the floor pan and go up, go up into the bottom side of our heater channels, our rocker panels. So those are the same deal as those big four bolts on the on the front firewall. These go up into a nut cert that's inside of the heater channel. They get moisture and dust and road grime and crud all up in there and they just rust. They grow into that nut cert. So that, I mean, they are really difficult to get out. And again, if you just go hammering on these with your impact, you know, they're going to break off. And that is a whole headache to try to get drilled out and fixed or cut open and replace those nut certs. So we want to be as careful as we can trying to get all of these bolts out. There's nine on each side. So we've got, you know, almost 20 of these to get out and it's, it takes time. Just, you know, go slow, work those bolts back and forth, just like we did on the firewall bolts and hopefully we'll get them out. Okay, so we're on to our next to last bolt here on the underside of the pan. And the kind of the key here is, you know, most of these have come out pretty painlessly. This one's starting to get a little tight. So, you know, what I mean by tight is, you know, as I'm wrenching on this thing, trying to get it to break loose, it's just getting to the point where it's really difficult to pull on that wrench. You know, the bolt has already turned a little bit, but it's kind of locking up on those threads. So at that point, what you don't want to do is just to keep wrenching on that thing and just twist it off. So at this point, you know, I'm just going to switch my ratchet. I'm going to run it back in a little bit because I've already gotten a couple of turns on it. I'm going to run it back in. Hopefully that will run some of that rust and crud back up through the threads and we can get this thing to continue to back out a little more cleanly. Uh, what you don't want to do is just go, you know, wrenching on this thing as hard as you can because all you're going to do is just twist that bolt right off. Or, worst case scenario, you're going to twist that nut cert loose inside of the rocker panel and then you've got to get up in here and you've got to cut the bolt head off or you've got to grind it off and that's just more hassle than it's worth. So, let's just take your time and usually you can get these out. So, we just got the last bolt out on this side and you can see, you know, we're kind of the same boat where that bolt is just completely rusted away to nothing. You know, our threads are really ruined on the end of this bolt. That's why they're so hard to get out. Um, just because the threads are nasty, if they get crud and rust all down in them as you're taking that bolt out. So you just have to be careful. You know, they usually come out in one piece as long as you take your time. Um, and like, this is a pretty rust-free car. Like by most people's standards, this is a pretty solid car. Um, there's not a lot of obvious rust in it. But, you know, you can still see all of this raw hardware, you know, it just gets eaten up over time, even on a really nice car. So you still have to be careful and take your time, you know, getting this hardware out. Okay, so we're on the other side of the car. I got most of these bolts out without any real issues. Um, however, we do have three that are not coming out. Um, so, you know, when you put the wrench on them, they just spin and spin and spin and spin and nothing happens. So... I suspected that, you know, that nut cert on the inside of our heater channel popped loose and, you know, was just spinning and not allowing the bolt to back out. However, upon further inspection, if we grab our floor pan, we can already pull it down loose. So that tells us, you know, that bolt hole is just completely rusted out. That bolt is doing absolutely nothing. So we don't even have to worry about getting those out. Um, and I think part of that is, you know, because this side of the car has already had some work done on it. We already have an aftermarket pan half on here. So these bolts have been out before, you know, they may have been wrenched around and, you know, some stress on the metal that caused it to continue to rust all the way out. Uh, but anyway, this side's loose. We're going to move on.
So we've got two more bolts on the outside of the car before we move inside and they are our two rear body mounts and they're in the rear fender well. So um, if, you, if the fender's on the car, you may have to take the tire off to get access to these, but we've already got our fender off so we can see, you know, they're just right here on top of our rear casting on our floor pan and they just bolt down through this rear body mount. These usually come out pretty painlessly, so I'm just gonna yank these two out. You got one on each side, we'll get these out and then we'll move to the inside of the car. So our two rear body mounts, this is another 17 millimeter bolt. Got a little extension so you can get down into this little pocket on the body mount. And like I said, usually these come out pretty painlessly. Um, if they are starting to get tight, these you can actually get in and get a little penetrating oil on. Um, but typically these come out pretty easy. So we've got our bolt out and then you also have a little square washer in here. You wanna make sure you don't lose that. You're gonna need that putting this back together. Okay, so we got both of our rear body mount bolts out. So we are now inside the car. We've got a few bolts to get out. So on each side of our floor pan, we're gonna have one, two on this side and then one, two over here. All four of those need to come out. And then over in the corner here, we also are gonna have one, and two and you can see this one has already been broken off and on a lot of these cars if the body has been off before these will get left out so a lot of times these won't even be here but if your car has never been apart before you know there may be um, insulation and carpet and stuff over these so you dig out and make sure that these bolts get out a lot of times these get overlooked and you'll be fighting and fighting figuring out why the body can't won't come off and it's because of these bolts right here so make sure that you don't overlook these Okay, so we've got all of our bolts and hardware that hold the body to the pan out. So we are almost ready to pull the body off of this. Um, on, an, on a fully assembled car, this will be at the point where we move into the engine bay and disconnect anything in the engine bay. This car, you can see, doesn't have an engine. So I'm going to try to run through everything that would, that would be back here. So forgive me if I miss anything. But we should have a coil wire. So your power wire that runs from the fuse panel to the coil. You'll have an oil pressure light wire a throttle cable on the carburetor, a main power wire on the top of your alternator or generator that'll either run into the main loom or over to the battery, and the charging light wire on the alternator or generator. Outside of that, I think that's everything in the engine bay that you need to unhook. So, you know, some wires, your throttle cable, and then the body will lift up off of here. You may need to remove your air cleaner, you know, a couple of odds and ends to help with some clearance, you know, getting the body off of the car. But that should be the only stuff I can think that is that connects the the body to the engine bay. Um, and come to think of it, you don't even need to take the throttle cable loose. The throttle cable can stay. Um, I think that's it. So we've got everything on the body disconnected. We're ready to take the body off of the pan. But before we do that, we're going to set the car back on the ground. The reason we do that is because a lot of times the body will really stick to that floor pan with the rubber pan seal and it'll really be difficult to get the two to separate. So if the car is up on jack stand still and you go picking up on that body, a lot of times the pan will drop out from underneath it really quick and we don't want to knock anything over, you know, create a dangerous situation. So we're going to put it back on the ground, then we can get the body picked up off of the floor pan. Okay, so the car is back on the ground, so we're ready to start lifting this thing up off of here. Now, if you have a lift at this point, what I would do is just pick the body up a little bit off of the floor pan. What I would normally do is put a jack under the front apron or something, pick the body up just a little bit, stick a four by four or something between the body and the pan on the front and the back of the car. And that will allow you to swing the lift arms in underneath the body and just easily pick the body up off of the car. We don't have that luxury here, so I'm gonna get out the engine hoist and we're gonna start yanking this thing up. Okay, so you see now I've got my engine hoist set up to pick up the front of the car and that is exactly what I was talking about. I couldn't have planned that any better. I had the car jacked up to the point where the front wheels were actually off of the ground and the pan was not dropping even though all of the bolts and everything were out. And you see now we finally got some separation here. So we're going to get the front end of this jacked up in the air, held up with something, and then we can move around. We can get the back end of the car picked up. Now, normally at this point, you know, I would call over a neighbor or a buddy or something and we would just pick this thing up off of here, you know, 
two or three guys can easily pick up a, a raw, an empty shell of a beetle like this up off of the floor pan, you know, with no problem. Uh, but the in, in the interest of keeping this totally DIY, I'm going to show you how to do this by yourself with, you know, relative safety in mind. Okay, so you can see all we've done is I've picked the front half of the car up and used my sawhorses and a board to just hold this up off of the floor pan. So what we want to do is we want to have something out wide enough to hold this car up so that we can roll the floor pan out from under it. So we're going to do the same thing in the rear. We're just going to pick the back half of the car up, get another set of sawhorses and a board, and then we can roll the entire floor pan out from underneath the car. Okay, so you can see we've got our beetle up off the floor pan now. Um, I got moved my sawhorses to the rear. I've got my trusty bar stool up front, and I can already hear some of you typing your comments away. And you probably wouldn't believe me if I told you how many cars I've set on this bar stool. Uh, really, just didn't feel like walking around to the back of the shop to get my other set of sawhorses. But we're only going to have this up here for a few minutes, so we're going to get this thing raised up a little bit higher now, so that we can get the rotisserie up under here and bolt this thing down to the rotisserie. All right, folks, so as you can see, we got the beetle up on the rotisserie. Um, you know, you can see it took a little finagling doing it by yourself. Definitely, you know, get some buddies if you got somebody to help you do it, but absolutely can get it done by yourself. Um, so I've got this thing all secured on here. I got to do some adjusting on my, uh, my heater channel braces and stuff. This thing's still set up for a Carmen Ghia, um, but we're gonna dive into this thing real soon. So in the next video, we're gonna jump into the floor pans and we got a bunch more content on this beetle coming up. So if you like watching the beetle stuff, the restoration stuff, the sheet metal work, stick around. Please subscribe. Do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time.